<laughs> hey, what's going on guys? The video you just saw has nothing to do with today's video. Uh, it's just actually a commercial I just shot a couple weeks ago and a bunch of you have been asking to see more of the films I've been doing so I thought I would incorporate it into this video. It was for Father's Day and I actually got to direct in DP that commercial. Now, I don't always direct in DP, just sometimes it makes most sense for me to do both of those roles. I don't always love doing it because I find sometimes when I'm trying to direct and DP, both my directing and DPing suffer. But for that film it made sense and you know we had the choice to use a gimbal but we thought handheld would be more real it would feel more authentic and that's what we are going for so don't always have to use a gimbal don't let people tell you that if people are telling you that I don't know who they are but tell them you don't have to just say no to gimbals I'm kidding gimbals are great I use them all the time just yeah they're great so today though I wanted to talk about documentary filmmaking because as mentioned in my last video I am going to Sri Lanka in two or three days to go film there for two weeks to shoot a short documentary. Now, I, I think the biggest mistake of a lot of YouTube tutorial videos out there is they address the audience as though they are cameramen and not filmmakers. They totally skip over the filmmaking part and they just focus on the camera. And so today I'm gonna to be talking a bit about both actually because if you're like me, you direct and DP, you direct and shoot, and you kind of need to know both, but if you're just focusing on cameras, it doesn't mean you're gonna get a good film, and if you're just focusing on film, you might screw up your camera work. So I wanna talk a bit about both today in documentary filmmaking. And so how this documentary came to be is a couple months ago, a TV network approached me and said, hey, we have some money that we need to spend overseas on filmmaking. We would love for you to do a documentary. So before I ever said yes, because it seemed like an amazing opportunity, I wanted to determine one thing. Is there a character or a story that we actually can tell? Because they told me that we want to film in Sri Lanka and that's just a topic. That's, that's not a story yet. So the first thing I do before I ever say yes to a project, before I ever pursue a film, is I find out is there an interesting character or at least a story involving a few people that I can follow. Now I'll put a link to another film I made about documentary storytelling uh, and it'll really help you determine if you have a good idea or not. So you can click that right now. That's what you should be trying to find out. Is there a story, not just a topic? Because the last thing you want to do is land in a country and not know what the heck you're filming. And now the second thing I do before I ever say yes to a documentary and before I ever leave to go to the country is make sure I have a good team in place. Now the budget always determines how many people you can involve in this, but I want to know, will I have the right people around me who can support my vision and can help me achieve it so that I'm not just on my own trying to figure out how to make this film? Now, the way I started with this is I've never been to Sri Lanka, so I started emailing producers I know and said, hey, do you know anyone who's ever worked in Sri Lanka? And from there, I found this amazing producer named Emily. She's been so incredible and she's actually done a lot of work in Sri Lanka. So immediately through Emily, we had the connection to different drivers Drivers, different fixers, different producers in Sri Lanka, and immediately I have the support network to help achieve what I'm trying to do. So before I ever said yes, I made sure, do I have a producer? Do we have people in country we can work with? Because I don't want to just say yes, and then the next thing you know, I'm on the hook for a documentary film, and I have no connections in the country, and have no way of actually executing on the film. So make sure before you go, you have the right team assembled. And just kind of jumping ahead a bit, I started deciding what gear do I want to bring? And as you know, I love vintage lenses, and I've just got a bunch of new ones in stock in stock, one of my store. No, I just purchased a bunch. What I loved, and I'll put a link below, is I got a new kind of adapter by KNF Concept. Can I get this lens off? These old lenses are a son of a gun. The KNF Concept adapter is super affordable. You can find it on Amazon. I love it because it's simple, it's robust, and they have many, many different adapter types for old lenses. So in this case, I have a PK adapter to the Sony, which works with my a7 III here. And what you actually have to do with old lenses is there's usually a bayonet thing that sticks out and you actually have to shave it off. So you can't really see here, but this thing used to stick out and you gotta shave that off so that you can actually, let me get it, so you can actually get it onto your camera. Now, if you wanna know more about the lenses, the kind of vintage lenses that I'm gonna be using on this trip, if you're interested, leave a comment below. I can talk about the different vintage lenses that I'm using. Like right here, I have an old lens, it's a Sears lens, which maybe that's made by Sears Canada. I don't know. If you know what a Sears lens is, let me know, I don't know. But I got like an Auto Chino here, 50 mil, they're great. Now, what you'll notice with old school lenses is that our modern, ND filters don't fit on them. Now this ND filter can fit on 
the camera that I'm using right now with the FS7 and my Sigma lens, what you gotta get is step rings. You gotta get adapters for that. So it looks like this weird snooty thing that you can buy and they're on Amazon. I'll put a link below. And these are great because they thread right on there. And now I can adapt my 77 mil ND filter here. And that way you don't have to buy like 25 different ND filters for every size of lens that you have. This is now adapts. And now I have an ND filter, so I can keep shooting at 1 50th of a second and shoot closer to wide open. On old vintage lenses, you don't always wanna shoot completely open because you start getting like the weird chromatic abrasion, but you know what, I'm gonna leave that for another video. But this is the setup I'm using. Uh, I'm taking a Sony FS7 over to Sri Lanka as well as a Sony a7 III. And speaking about crew, actually, I mentioned that you want to have the right team around you. I only have two weeks, a little less than two weeks to shoot this entire film in country. So what I did is rather than hiring just another crew member, another cameraman, I actually hired another director to work alongside me, another director DP type of person named Michael Del Monte. And Michael's a good friend. He has shot like four feature length documentaries before. He is a boss in documentary. He's gonna win an Academy one day for sure. I love the guy. We shoot often together and so I brought him along because not only does he have a Sony FS7, but he also owns a Sony a7 III. So we kind of have identical camera pack so if we ever need to split off and film two different interviews in two places at the same time, we can do that. So there's another piece of advice is sometimes you need to just hire people who can do the same thing as you. And I'm not afraid about sharing the title of directing on this one. It just makes sense. In order for me to get the best film, I need to be able to surround myself with the people who can help me achieve that vision. And Michael's definitely going to be one of them. Oh, and one thing you can't forget when you go is the old trusty top handle. I never shoot on mirrorless or DSLRs without one of these. This is the best thing because it keeps your camera set up small, you're not holding some crazy gimbal, and it allows you to get really smooth shots because again, the camera's hanging from your hand rather than you shaking it while you hold it with two hands. Gotta get a top handle. If you don't have a top handle, they're like 30 bucks, get one, it'll be one of your best tools in your filmmaking kit. and it packs away really tiny and you can attach still stuff because there's still a hot shoe up here so so make sure to get yourself a top handle if you don't and again this video is talking about before you ever get to the country because we all want to shoot but you need to be prepared the thing I always do is I write a script for my documentaries and that might sound weird like why would you write a script for a documentary you don't know how it's gonna unfold well, I don't know how it's all gonna unfold, but I know how to control what I need to get. So in my mind, I make a best guess at the most amazing film possible that I could get in country. And I begin writing a script for that. And you don't have to be a script writer to do this. You can just literally write in bullet points the scenes you want. I just did a video about this recently about why you should create director's treatments and director's documents so that your crew knows what you're trying to achieve. And I'll put a link right now for that video. I highly recommend watching it if you're serious about directing. And another thing, before you ever go to the country, do lots of research. Get on as many Skype calls or as many phone calls with people who've been to the country that you're going to. Read articles, watch documentaries. I've just been ingesting so much information about the possible story that we're gonna be filming. Which I can't talk about yet. I do that so that when I get to the country, I'm still learning, but I have an idea about the place I'm in so, so I don't get overwhelmed with story possibilities. You gotta go to the country with an idea of the story you're gonna try and tell because if you don't have that idea, if you don't have that direction from the beginning, then you're just gonna get there and film everything and come back with no story. You're just gonna come back with a bunch of random footage. You need to come up with at least an idea, a trajectory of where you want your film to finish what story you're trying to tell, who you're trying to talk to. So that when you get there, you don't just go film sunsets and get random interviews because you're not gonna have a compelling film or compelling story. And for me personally, I find just focusing on a couple characters or one in particular helps me build a narrative and helps me not get lost in all of the amazing stuff that you could be shooting. Last but not least, this is my little secret. It's incredible tip that's gonna save you when you're in country and that's granola bars. You gotta buy yourself like 30 granola bars at least when you're going away for a couple weeks. Cause sometimes you don't know if you're gonna have food between shoots and between locations. And sometimes you might get sick when you're in a new country. For me, it's granola bars. 
and I don't get kinds with chocolate. I love chocolate, but they melt if you have chocolate. So you gotta get kinds with like cranberry and nuts. Get granola bars that are okay to melt. Trust me, if there's one thing that you're gonna bring, it's a camera and a whole whack of granola bars. Yeah, so I hope this has helped today. I know it's a bit of smattering of information, but I wanted to give you guys a little glimpse into my brain of how I approach my documentaries. And so just to recap that, the first thing I do is I make sure there is a story that I can tell. Make sure that there's a person and that there is a journey that I can film with that person so that I'm not just getting to the country and filming everything so that when I come back to the edit, I have nothing. Number two is I make sure I get a good crew around me, people who have either been to the country before or who have experience overseas filming and so i try to put the best team around me number three go over all your gear make sure you know what you need actually just today i was prepping my gear and i realized i needed a different step ring so i went and picked one up at uh, a store just down the street so it's good always make sure to prep your gear before you go and make sure you write a script even if it's just a couple bullet points of how you want your story to progress so that you know when you get in country what you're actually trying to achieve, kind of like a shot list of different scenes that you have. And last but not least, get yourself some granola bars. And that is key. Get yourself granola bars, put them in your bag. I like granola bars and I pack them everywhere. It's like in every pouch, I'll have like lens cloth, an ND filter, and then a granola bar. They're just everywhere. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Clap twice if you liked it and hit the like button if you really like it. Uh, I'll be trying to film a little vlog while I'm in country filming this documentary, trying to show you guys some behind the scenes of what we're doing and uh, we'll go from there. And yeah, I'll leave you guys with some footage from a documentary I shot called Riscate. Here's some motorbikers. I'll see you guys on the next one.